We stand with the people of Orlando who have endured a terrible attack on their city. Today we're dealing with something that we never imagined and is unimaginable. And it is with great sadness that I share we have not 20 but 50 casualties. In addition to the shooter, there are another 53 that are hospitalized. Kind of winding down the night, the night was getting ready to close. All of a sudden something sounded like firecrackers going off. Kind of lowered, I DJ there, so I lowered the music. Stopped for a second, then all of a sudden it sounded again, and then I turned the music off, and then basically everybody was just running out. It went with the beat almost until you heard just too many shots. It was just like, bang, 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 bang. So at approximately 0202 hours this morning, uh, we had an officer working at Pulse Nightclub who responded to shots fired. Our officer uh, engaged in a gun battle. And it was just complete chaos. Everybody's running out, I'm hiding behind my little DJ booth, people are hiding behind me. And there was like probably like three or four of us under there and I'm like, and when they, they stopped, I was like, all right, come on, let's go. And then everybody just took off out the door. Uh, the suspect at some point went back in inside the club where more shots were fired. This did turn into a hostage situation. He just kept on gushing blood out. There was a person next to me that gave me his bandana and we, we packed his wound uh, with the bandana. We know that there was a bomb threat, possibly a device, so everyone was evacuated. Um, the eyewitness that I talked to said that the gunfire continued even after people were evacuated. Orange County, Seminole County uh, law enforcement all responded and they brought the SWAT team in and were able to do a, a hostage rescue. I think it was about 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, the shooter was pronounced dead at about 5.53, I think is what the timeline says. The man who opened fire in an Orlando nightclub this morning was Omar Mateen. He's a 29-year-old man, worked as a security guard. He has a three-year-old son. He's divorced. Just before the shooting began, he called 911, according to police, and pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. He's said to have been investigated by the FBI for possible ties to Islamic extremism, though he had not been charged. I asked the FBI if there was any connection to Islamic radicalism. There appears to be. I have checked with intelligence staff and they do believe that there is some connection to ISIS, but I might say that is not official. Mateen's father insisted his son was motivated by hatred of homosexuals. His son had recently seen two men kissing in Miami and that it had upset him. My colleague Jessica Inman talked to a friend who went to middle school and high school with Mr. Mateen. He described him as dorky and said he was someone who was sometimes picked on. What is clear is that he was a person filled with hatred. Over the coming days, we will uncover why and how this happened, and we will go wherever the facts lead us. This is clearly an act of terrorism. I declared a state of emergency for Orange County. We're gonna provide all the resources that anyone needs. The shooter targeted a nightclub where people came together to be with friends, to dance and to sing, and to live. So this is a sobering reminder that attacks on any American regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, or sexual orientation, is an attack on all of us and on the fundamental values of equality and dignity that define us as a country. We join with the families, friends, and neighbors of victims in mourning them. An outpouring of love and support from Central Florida is the bare minimum due to them. We will unite in an affirming bond that is more mighty and enduring than the twisted thoughts of a young man who allegedly unleashed this atrocity. Central Florida is tested now as never before. Our heartfelt response will go stronger every day, united.